these kids, Lord, are saying.
don't know. I pray that you do find it. Amen.
Faith one for two. Amen. 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 Two Amen. Uh, the Lord, he'll, he'll, he'll give us exactly what we need. You know that? Amen. Amen. That's why it's important, I've always said, especially while uh, kids are young in the house of God, to train them to sing for the Lord. If they have the ability, not everybody's got the ability. I don't have the ability to play one instrument. But there are those that do. And uh, those that can't, they sing. Listen, some may say, well, I'm not the best singer. The Lord just wants to hear your joyful noise. Right. He said, make a joyful noise. He didn't say you had to hit the key right. He right. said, make a joyful noise. You know what that is? A singing and giving praises to God. Amen. And anybody can do that. Amen. And uh, we thank the Lord. But you probably sing better than you realize. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. If you've got your Bible, turn with me this morning to the book of Jude. The book of Jude. Suffering the vengeance 
of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute, brute, as brute beast in those things, they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But beloved, remember you the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Amen. And of some have compassion. Making a difference. And others saved with fear. Pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Amen. I read all of that. Not very much reading. This rich book. Amen. The book of Jude. Jude was the brother of James. He said so in verse number one, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. James, who was in turn the Lord's brother, that is, he was the son of Mary and Joseph and half-brother, if you say, to Jesus. He and James both were named in Matthew and Mark as sons of Mary and brothers of Jesus. But yet Jude, like James, did not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ until after the resurrection. Can you imagine being Jude and James and being raised in the same house as our Lord and Savior was and not really believing they probably would never deny 
the miracles that they saw him do as a young child, the strange things that happened in their house, if they did, we know nothing of their upbringing other than when Christ was at 12 and he was left behind in Jerusalem and he had great wisdom to speak with doctors and lawyers of the things pertaining to God, sitting in the temple, asking questions and answering questions. So we know that even from early on, he had great intellect, wisdom. He is a God in the flesh, is a fact, even at 12. Right. But they did not believe that he was God in the flesh the Savior that was to come. Think of how hard it would be for two Jewish boys being raised under the Old Testament and then to leave all of that and lay hold of the claim that their half-brother was the Son of God, God incarnate. That'd take a whole lot. And, of course, it took a whole lot. They were disciples of their half-brother, if you want to call him that, Jesus. They were not so uh, wicked-hearted, hard-hearted, that they did not know of the things that he could do. They, of course, they did follow him all of his life, even through his earthly ministry. But when he raised from the dead, that's when they knew he was God. Amen. And Jude laid claim that he was not anymore just a brother or even a half-brother. He says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ. I am the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. He listened to me. He realized that his earthly brother, Jesus, was far above what him and James were. Right. That he was somehow born and came in to this household through their mother's womb. But he didn't come the same way that Jude and James said. Right. They realized he was the son of God. Amen. Raised from the dead. That watched him crucified Amen. three days before. But he said, I am the servant, a bond servant. A bond slave to this Jesus Christ. I am no more a skeptic. I am a servant. Not just any servant. I am a bond slave to this man. Jesus Christ. That's how much faith that Jude had put in Jesus Christ. Are you listening to? That's how much he believed. Right. He believed with all of his heart. Listen, all of his upbringing, everything that he saw when he was young, that did not matter. He knew that he was now the servant of the Most High God. Amen. The God that was made flesh and dwelt among men. Amen. He beheld his glory. He said, I'm a brother of James to them that are sanctified by God the Father preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Jude, this man that wrote in verse number four at the end, when he said they men turning the grace of our God. See how he called it? Our God. In the lasciviousness and denying, look how he says it, the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Hey. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the only Lord God. Hey. That's what Jude was saying. Hey. Our Lord Jesus Christ, he is the only Lord God. Hey. When Jude finished up uh, his sermon here in his reading, I read it in your hearing. He said, to the only wise God, our Savior. To the only wise God, our Savior. The majesty, 
dominion, and power, both now and forever. So Jude, again, was a great believer after the resurrection. But being an unbelieving brother of Jesus, again, just considered himself merely a servant, a bond slave of Jesus Christ. The time that he wrote this epistle, uh, in, in his closing verses, again, he calls it God our Savior. Four times he calls him Lord. Are you listening to me? Amen. Now, it was probably some years after 2 Peter that was written that uh, Jude uh, refers to some of what Peter was saying in this epistle. He's talking about and what I want to preach about those that leave their estate. Those that leave their estate. And so Jude is a uh, warning to. He is needful in verse number three. Uh, beloved, I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. You see, Jude wanted to uh, give them the doctrines of the common salvation wow. that they once knew. And he wanted them to earnestly contend. But listen to him. He said, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Listen, now there were teachers. Are you listening? In Jude's day, they were not the legalistic Judaizers who uh, denied, you know, the great truths. Uh, are you listening to me? Of uh, the doctrine of grace. I mean, they rejected the doctrine of grace, the right. Judaizers. It was the law and faith. Law and faith. And the doctrine of his grace and salvation was by grace alone Amen. through faith. So Jude's not talking about the Judaizers here. But rather he's talking about them. Listen, uh, a group of men who abused this grace, turning the great truth of Christian liberty into a license. To live lascivious, a license to sin, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. I want to tell you something, church. If that ain't our day, I don't know what it is. Right. Amen. Today, everybody wants to go to church and say they're saved, but nobody wants to live for God. Come on. Amen. Nobody wants to have any standard of holiness about them. Right. Nobody wants to just be given holy unto the Lord like Amen. Jude, a bond slave of Jesus Christ. He loved his Lord. And listen, Jude was preaching to them of the common salvation. He said, it was once given to the church. You ought to know about this. Right. It's, the, it's the saving grace of Christ. That Amen. changes men and when it makes them a new creature, Amen. it doesn't leave us in our sin. Amen. To live in a lascivious place. <laughs> Jude, he begins to go back to what Peter said. Peter was written some years before that Jude, he seems to refer to it. Let's look at it. Verse 17 and 18 of Jude. Look what he says. But beloved, remember you the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own godly lust. Now no doubt he was referring to Peter and Timothy. Timothy wrote of it in 1 Timothy 4.1. Right. Peter, if you want to read it with me, in 2 Peter chapter number 3 and verse number 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. That's exactly what Jude referred to. Right. 
He said, don't you remember the apostles, the words of, of the apostles of Christ? How that they told you in the last days there would be scoffers walking after their own lust? And Peter said, saying, where is the promise of his coming? And Jude is saying, they told you. And how about verse number 6 of Jude? Let's look at verse number 6 of Jude. How he said, he talked about the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He has preserved in everlasting chains under darkness, under the judgment of the great day. That's the great white throne judgment. Right? Hey. Yeah. He's referring again to Peter in 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. That's right. Jude makes it clear the judgment of the great day, the great white throne judgment. Jude again refers to it. Look at verse 11. Are you listening through verse 13 in Jude? Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Cory. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. They come right in. They can eat right with us. Sing with us. Stand with us. Fellowship. No fear. No fear of God. Right. Living in sin. Going after the way of Cain. Look what he said. I'll read the rest of it in a moment, but I'm going to get the reference. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozer, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, they love unrighteousness. But with rebuke for his iniquity. See, he's living in iniquity. Peter said this in verse 17. These are wells without water. Listen to it. These are wells without water. Clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Look what Jude said about it in verse 12. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water. Same words as Peter. Right. Carried about of wind, trees whose fruit withereth. Then he said, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. I'm going to tell you something. We that are saved have been twice born. Amen. Right. Right. These people are twice dead. Mm. Hey. Dead in their trespasses and sins. One and now they have come to the knowledge of the truth and rejected it and lived in their sin and they are now twice dead. Mm. Are you listening to? Gone too far. Right. Rejected the grace of God. Claiming grace. Right. Oh, I believe grace. You know, that God just overlooks uh, all that I do. And I can live in the world and love the world and lavish the world and look like the world. And, that, and then it's nothing wrong, preacher. It's you, preacher, and it's the word. Oh, no, listen. Ain't nothing wrong with the word I'm preaching, right, right, right. I'll tell you, God, if he's a God of holiness 6,000 years ago, He's the God of holiness today. Anything, I'll tell you what, and it does not surprise me that the world hates that message. Because we are both feet in what Revelation's called the last day's church. Right. And what are they? Very calm. Very fleshly. Revelation 
Revelation, John said this about it. He said that they were, they did not even know they were wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Don't even realize. That's what the last days religion is going to look like and is looking like. Right. But what, let's, let's just look and see what Jude's talking about. So he writes <laughs> these pagan philosophies had by his time infiltrated the church. And the Holy Spirit constrained you to urge the Christian to earnestly contend for the faith. He said in verse 3, when I gave all diligence, I mean, he got in his mind and heart, he said, I've, got, I've got to write a letter. I've got to write a letter to the church about the common salvation. I mean, Jude had seen so much of this slip into the church and he'd hurt so much. He said, I have got to write a letter of what I know to be true, of what the apostles have preached for years, of what they have said, what was once delivered unto the saints, the church of God. And I believe he was stirred. Are you listening to me? Amen. Could not believe the paganism that had infiltrated their doors. And he said, I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful. There's a sense of urgency. Jude had been planning to write this exposition of the doctrines associated with the common salvation. The great salvation held in common by all who he said were sanctified, preserved, and called. Said, it looks like the Holy Spirit said, Jude, it's more needful that you write for the church to defend the faith. Defend the faith. Now, I want to tell you something. I like what one writer said. He said the defense of the faith, and this is not the faith that you and I put in the Lord Jesus Christ at salvation. You know that childlike faith that we have? He's not talking about that faith. He's talking, when he said earnestly contend for the faith, he's talking about the whole base of the doctrine of Christianity. Right. right. That faith. You need to earnestly contend for the faith. Amen. The virginity of the birth of Christ. Yeah. The preciousness of his blood. Hey, his right. death and his resurrection. Hey. His sinless life. Right. He is incarnate God right. in the flesh. Right. Emmanuel. Are you listening? Hey. Being born again. The spirit of God in dwelling the believer. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The grace of God that brings salvation. That appears to all men. That teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. You get the real grace of God in you, that's what it will teach you. Amen. And so, he said, the Holy Spirit compelled him to defend the faith. Now listen, when you have to, when you have to feel like you're backed in a corner that you've got to put your hands up, then there must be an intense attack coming your way. And no doubt, because I read it to you, there was a very intense satanic attack coming into the church. Right. He was talking about, for there are certain men crept in, unawares. What is that? How do they not know? These are tares among wheat. Wolves among sheep. They look like, I mean, when you at first meet, you thought they look religious. And I didn't be saved. It's between them and the Lord. But 
You know, here, here they are, coming in. But he said they crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Now that does not mean that God ordained them to be condemned. He said who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. In other words, they were foretold in times past that they would be this way. That they would be men like this. And that they would go into this condemnation just like the angels that sinned, that left their first estate, just like Sodom and Gomorrah, who had left their first estate. He said these men, their first sin, ungodly men, ungodliness, ungodly. And what made them ungodly? Turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. Turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. They crept in unawares. Verse 5, he said. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this. You that are going to read this letter, you once knew this. I don't know how you forgot it. You know, it's amazing to me. I've pastored people over the years. And then, you know, you see them, you know, years later. Or sometimes, it don't even take years. Sometimes. I mean, you put, you put so much of the book into people's lives, and you pray over them, and you beg God over them, and then see them, and you're like, did they not hear a thing that was being said? Right. So, I think Jews, like, you once knew this. Right. It was told to you anyway. None. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to put you in remembrance how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, see, this was a message that they had preached, the early apostles, and he remembered it, how the Jews had come out of Egypt and afterward destroyed them that believed not. See, there was a mixed multitude. Hey, just because you're in this building among the church don't mean you're going to heaven. Right, right. right. that's right. Just because you can get your name on a roll, you can even have the preacher baptize you. That does not mean you're going to heaven. Right. right. You may have walked out with the rest of us, but you're not a believer. You're not a believer. What does it mean to be a believer? Oh, I believe, preacher. Do you? Well, if you believe, it changes. Amen. Amen. If you believe fire is hot, you're not going to stick your hand to it. Right. If you really believe. Are you listening? Right. If you believe the Grand Canyon's a long way down, you're not going to drive your car past the edge. Right. Yeah. If you really believe it. Are you listening to me? Amen. I mean, there are those that say they believe, but they don't believe. Mm. And they came out, but they didn't believe. And God destroyed them and believed not. Look what he said. The angels, which kept not their first estate. Listen, they were made for a purpose. They were made to worship God. Hey. Those people that were brought out of Egypt were made to serve God in Canaan land. Right. But they didn't believe. The angels, are you listening to sin? They were made to worship God and do whatever God's will would be. Yet they sinned. They left their first estate. And God, he said they left their own habitation. They did it themselves. He hath reserved an everlasting chains under darkness, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner. Don't you get that? 
in like manner of what? Just like the angels. Giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. This was sodomy. Homosexuality. Lesbianism. All that LGBTQ, whatever, all the world, they can keep, they can keep adding little, little letters. Are you listening to me? Yeah. It's all wicked in the eyes of God. Amen. Right? Right. And men and women are leaving their first estate to be that way. Right. Yeah. The Sodomites did, Sodom and Gomorrah, gave themselves over to it. Just like the angels that left their habitation, men are leaving their, what they've been made to be. Men, women are leaving what they've been made to be. Women. And not only that, but saved men and women. He said they're set forth an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. The example. The angels are, are they're, they're gonna suffer the vengeance of eternal fire. They're right now reserved under chains of darkness. But the Sodom and Gomorrah crowd, right now, they are suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. That's right. The vengeance of eternal fire. Why? For leaving. What God had made them. Listen, the sin that the angels had committed, God had likened it unto the sin of the Sodomites. That's how serious the sin of sodomy is. That they would leave the habitation of heaven, rebel against God. And he said, in like manner, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, those cities round about, that sin falls in the same Category of severity. Wow. Likewise, also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, speak evil of dignities. These filthy dreamers. Despite the example that God made of the angels and the sodomite, these dreamers who know about God's grace. Are you listening to me? They insist or persist in turning God's grace into lasciviousness. This modern age, listen to me, of, of all this sexual promiscuity, this gay pride. Are you listening to me? And yeah, I want to tell you something. Our kids need to hear it because it's being shoved down their throat every day. Right. They know about it. They already hear about it. They see it everywhere except here. Right. What we need to do, tell them here why that is wrong. Right. Why that's a sin. Why that's filthy dreaming. Are you listening to me? Why that's promise, why that's the sinistness, right. how that's an abomination, that's right. how that that sin will cause you to suffer eternal vengeance of fire. Right. Yeah. I know a bunch of them preaching, they say, they go to church, but you don't know any of them say. <laughs> they ever get saved, they won't be doing that. Right. They'll turn from that. Amen. They'll turn from that. Like I turn from my sin, like you turn from your sin. Amen. Right. They'll turn from that sin. They're being defended today by Christian theological men, pastoral leaders. Right. right here in the United States, around the world. Listen, they have even taken the liberty, the God-given liberty of the United States of America that God gave us and perverting that liberty. They've done the same thing to the liberty of God's grace. But it's being defended. But they speak evil of dignity. I'm going to do this. I'm not done. 
This word dignity, listen, they speak evil. They despise dominion and speak evil of dignity. And that dignity, that is glory, specifically God's glory. Hey. These filthy dreamers are ready to blaspheme all that is high and holy. Right. Are you listening to me? In God's heavenly kingdom or his dominion, they despise dominion. What dominion? God's dominion. They speak evil of dignity, his everything that is holy and righteous. Hey. You don't hear, listen, you don't hear people screaming when people are, are patting people for their sins. Right. But if anybody, if any preacher or any Christian stands on righteousness and holiness right. against wickedness and against sinfulness right. and against worldliness, listen, if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. I don't care who That's you right. are. That's right. That's what the Bible says. Hey. That's the kind of stuff that they're going to get mad at us over. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Then we're the bad guy. No, I, I'm trying to keep you from suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Right. Hey. Yeah. I'm trying to let the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shine in that dark place that you're at. Yeah. People get in those dark places. Listen. With, with sodomites and every kind of lasciviousness or you live every kind of wickedness and perverseness, every kind of worldliness, and they don't want anybody saying anything about their sin. Uh, well, the cross has said all about your yeah. sin that God needs to say. Yeah. All the world is guilty before God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You have sinned and you need to repent and put your faith in Christ. But they are ready to blaspheme. They speak evil of dignity. They are ready to speak evil against the true God. Right. How many of them? You've seen them on television shows. You get somebody that's really trying to do right, and they'll make them out to be the bad guy every time. Yeah. You'll get some television host standing there just gleaming and shining. That's not the God that I know. Right. And the world goes crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Their God that they know is not the God of the Bible. Hey. Right. The God that you know better be the God of the Bible. Hey. Amen. Yeah. The Savior you go to better be the Savior of the Bible. See, the devil's got a counterfeit for God. He's got a counterfeit for Jesus. There's another Jesus. You say, you sure preach the Bible says, if any man preach any other Jesus. Are you listening to him? Let it be accursed. He'll suffer the vengeance of eternal fire. That's how serious it is. They've gone in the way of Cain, gone in the way of Baal. Speak evil of those things which they know not. Listen, I'm I'm nothing. I, I'm nothing. I'm I'm like John, and I mean it with all my heart. I'm just a voice. I'm just a voice of death, crying in this wilderness, trying to prepare the way to come to the Lord. Hey, it's not important who I am. I spent over 30 years in the ministry and in this book and on my knees. And then people you know that don't hardly ever lift up their Bible, they want to try to tell me what the Bible says. Listen, I'm all for, I've always tried to stay teachable. I'm still learning. If it's biblical, I'm teachable if it's biblical. Right. Hey. But don't try to tell me something if it's you're trying to defend the world and defend sin and defend wrong. Right. Don't come to me. Don't come to me. I'm not I'm not believing. I'm not taking. Right. I know 
know what this book says. And I know about God's grace. And I know what God's grace does for us. And I know what his salvation does for us. And there are many that want to claim it. I'm going to say this and I'm done. Many that want to claim it, but they really don't believe it. Why? They don't live in this estate. They've left that. They, they live in their own estate. And they're, they've left the first. They've left what God intended for them. Right. God made you rhythm, whether male or female. God made you to be that way. Amen. God made a man to marry a woman. Made a woman to marry a man. Hey, listen to me. God made the institution of the home just the way that it is, yeah. with a husband and a wife, a male and a female, and children. Hey. Are you listening to me? Amen. Hey. And then God put the church here to preach the gospel that you be saved. That's it. Male and female, man and woman, husband and wife, children in the home. Saved! Amen. That's the plan of God for your life. Hey. Right. And if you walk away from that, there's nowhere else to go. Hey. Nowhere else to go. I know this may seem like a hard message this morning. I think Jude was very disturbed at what was creeping in. Hey. Wow. <clears throat> that he had to remind them of the common salvation and had to turn and do more teaching them to defend the faith. Yeah. And defending the faith, listen, is not just the preacher's job. Right. This should be every born-again believer that knows the truth. Amen. Amen. You stand and defend. I'm not talking about fighting with people, fist fighting. Right. God didn't call us to fist fight. I'm talking about spiritually fighting. Yeah. Amen. Standing on the truth. Being bold as a lion to speak the truth. When lies and untruth are being told. I don't know how many times, and I'm saying this for your benefit, I've always tried to be sensitive to the Lord, the Holy Spirit. I really have. Especially when I was in the workplace. Not to just open my mouth and run my mouth any time. You know, I, but if I hear people talking, talking about church or what's right and what's wrong. Hey. If God didn't want me to say nothing, I won't say out of it. But if God said, you need to, you need to quote this. You need to tell them. You got that a little bit mixed up. Hey. I don't know how many times I've told people in the room, the Bible don't say that. That's been a Misunderstanding of thinking that's been stuff preached for years, but that's not what the scripture says. And then you know what the scripture says and tell them. Hey. Amen. Yeah. Get in that book where you can earnestly contend for the faith. Hey. hey. I'm talking about the faith, the doctrines of our I'm not talking about whether Adam had a belly button. I ain't gonna argue with somebody over that. That's not a doctrinal issue. Right. right. But whether or not it takes the blood of Jesus to save people, Amen. that is a doctrinal issue. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That is. I want you to stand this morning. I love you. <coughs> and this year to come a day's ahead, as much as God will give us until he comes, I urge all of you that believe to earnestly contend for the faith. <coughs> How do you contend? Let the world know whose side you're on. Stand with the church. Stand with the truth. There's a man one time, they say, I heard this, I actually heard this at Brother Paul Hill's church, I think, years ago, over in Franklin. Brother Danny and his wife were members over there. 
I heard a preacher talking about this man that was in service. This is true. But he was deaf. Couldn't hear nothing. But he'd come and he'd sit. No matter what was going on, he'd cry and he'd raise his hand. Whether it was singing or preaching, people thought, he can't hear nothing, he can't hear nothing. Finally, somebody asked him, he said, why do you always come here? You can't hear anything. You can't hear one thing. He signed back to him, I want everybody to know whose side I'm on. Hey. Hey. That's why he's a pastor. Find out whose side you're on. Don't play for the enemy. Father, in Jesus' name, God, I love you. I thank you.